Hello everyone, thanks for watching to a level here as, um, man, can't speak right now. <laughs> uh, and yeah, happy Thanksgiving in Canada here, so, yeah. Um, second Monday of every October is, yeah, Thanksgiving for us, so. <laughs> yeah, and, um, guess today to, oh, was it, <laughs> didn't really plan, but it just happened to do this for Thanksgiving and all that, um. Thought I'd talk about kind of another top, you know, favorite games list type of thing, and this time I decide with the original Xbox as I really love it. Um, it's probably my favorite system to collect for right now because of you know not a whole lot of nostalgic for it and all that. So a lot of the games are very very cheap. I wish I could get more GameCube games, but you know only a select few are cheap enough and so yeah original xbox and yeah a lot of great games and man had such a hard time originally it was going to be a top 10 then it's like no let's do top 20 just to get good amount of games covered and even then i'm like Ugh. i looked at my shelf and i had such a hard time but i think i'm kind of set with these 20 but yeah um guess a few things is yeah for third party games and all that just know like i don't have all of them on the original xbox so things like lord of the rings games or grand theft auto and all that won't be featured in this because yeah i have those on other systems which you know definitely if i had xbox versions of them they would be on here but uh yeah and you know or some things that, you know, games, there's a lot of games I haven't even touched in my library or anything like that, and, you know, just stuff like that, or some games like uh, Elder Scrolls Morrowind, um, that one isn't on here because, while for the longest time it would have been in my top five uh, original Xbox games, now, like, you know, it is a very dated game, so it's not there, so, yeah, just... With all that, let's do my top 20 original Xbox games. So, at number 20, I have Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Um, absolutely love this game. Um, oh yeah, I should also mention there won't be gameplay here or anything just because we're doing 20 games and all that. It's a little tough or would take a really long time that I just, yeah, don't quite have right now to record all these games in do all that just so you know like hope you understand but yeah harry potter chamber of secrets really great game um you know i grew up with harry potter so much the books and movies and absolutely love them um this is my second favorite i do like uh prisoner of azkaban more which i have on gamecube but yeah this game is still fantastic and just being able to explore hogwarts and you know to doing all these little things, and, uh, wish Quidditch was a bit more in this, but, you know, still very solid game, really love it, and, yeah, kind of childhood favorite, <laughs> and at number 19, I have Gladius, so this is another game that grew up with, which I actually never owned until pretty recently in the last few years, so I always played this at you know, my best friend's house at the time, and since I didn't even have original Xbox for the longest while, but yeah, absolutely love this game, um, very fun tactical role-playing game, and yeah, a lot of depth to it, and uh, yeah, just a really cool time, and yeah, had a lot of fun playing this at friend's house, and we always take turns up uh, playing through with that, <laughs> so uh, at number 18, I have Phantom Dust. Excellent, excellent game. Um, so this was kind of during a time where card RPGs were like the biggest thing. They were everywhere. I kind of wish they were there were a bit more. Like I know there's some indie games that still do it. Like um, uh, Steam. What was it? Steam World. Uh, it's part of the Steam world or uh games or whatever because there's steam world dig there's like steam heist and uh a card one like steam world quest or something like that but yeah that one's excellent but yeah so during a time with card rpgs this was 
this is still, like, an excellent game. There was supposed to be a remake of this, like, years and years ago, but something happened with Microsoft where they didn't fund it, so it never happened, and, um, can't remember if this got remastered or re-released or something like that. I feel like it did, but I still just played this version. It's still an absolute blast trying to kind collect all the cards and build strategies. It's a really fun game to play over and over again because you can do completely different things with it. And yeah, just absolutely love this game. <laughs> then at number 17, I have Ultimate Spider-Man. So yeah, another excellent Spider-Man game. Um, you know, and I love that it was this whole kind of cha you know, choices and all that and yeah playing as like spider-man and venom and yeah just a really fun um kind of open world exploration type of game with a lot of little uh tasks to do jeez i can't talk i can't think right now <laughs> but yeah really fun and uh, really great art style too has that cell shaded comic book look so yeah really love that and yeah, just one of my favorite Spider-Man games to play. So, let's... 20... 19, 18, 17, okay. <laughs> so we're at 16, and we have Scarface, The World Is Yours. So, this was something I picked up just a few months ago. But yeah, absolutely love this game. Um, God, I wish I picked this up uh, before I did my licensed game series and all that to cover that but yeah just a really cool grand theft auto style um game that kind of changes the story a little bit where you get the iconic line like say hello to my little friend <laughs> right and uh kind of alters the story right so instead of yeah tony montana like um <laughs> you know, his story sort of continues, right? So, yeah, just an excellent, excellent game. Very fun, very cool. Grand Theft Auto clone, and yeah, highly, highly recommend. And I already forgot, what was that? 2019, 18, 15 we're at now. <laughs> I lose count easily. So at 15, I have uh, Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction. What a fun, just open world playground type of game, right? Like, uh, being able to destroy whatever you want, and yeah, it's just pure, pure fun. It's another Grand Theft Auto type clone, and it works so well, which it sounds so weird for, you know, a uh, kind of superhero type game or whatever, but man, it's so fun, and destroying everything, rack wreak as much havoc as possible it's just yeah fantastic game all right at 14 i think one two three four five six. <laughs> okay 19 18 17 16. yeah 14 oh man i'm so bad at this uh, <laughs> but we have time splitters future perfect so Another game I recently picked up uh, not too long ago, and yeah, recently beat this too, I think. They're August or September I beat this, but yeah, really fun. Um, I do think it's kind of the weakest of the Time Splitters games, but that does not mean it's bad at all. It's a fantastic game, Um, you know, really creative with its sort of design of just a really fun shooter where... You kind of time travel through different eras. This one more focuses on um, the future and all that and kind of fixing that. So you don't get too many levels through the past, but it's, it's yeah, still fantastic and a lot of fun to play. There was one glitch I ran into on a uh, train level or whatever. Um, that was really weird because a uh, cutscene happened and then an enemy just appeared out of nowhere coming through the door where it's supposed to be locked and we're supposed to be trapped in a door and there's just an enemy there like it was so broken because I could leave through the door that's supposed to be locked you're not supposed to open it it was so <laughs> broken but yeah after I died it was all fixed so yeah really fun and had great time playing that um 
Twenty nineteen, eighteen, seventeen, sixteen, fifteen, fourteen. So, thirteen. Ah, sorry, something in my eye. <laughs> okay, thirteen. Try and remember. Thirteen, thirteen, thirteen. We have James Bond, Double Seven, Everything or Nothing. So yeah, this was the last or, um, I guess, Bonds that Pierce Brosnan ever did. Um, and yeah, they did really great job with this. Um. You know, doing third person for the first time since I think Tomorrow Never Dies, which wasn't a very good game, but yeah, they did a really great job with this. Um, you know, having like Judy Dench and uh, Pierce Brosnan as like actually voicing along with big, big, huge uh, a list of characters. You know, like Heidi Klum, uh, Willem Dafoe, uh, yeah, John Cleese would have been R at the time, so. Yeah, and um, can't remember the actor's name, but the original person who played Joss and all that, they had him voice. So, yeah, that was really, really cool. Excellent game and excellent way to sort of go out, you know, swan song for Pierce Brosnan and all that for 007. Yeah, fantastic game. Love it. So, I know that was 13, so we're at number 12. 12, 12, 12. We got Return of Castle Wolfenstein fantastic uh shooter like great characters great story um these wolfenstein games are so like just so cool right um because it kind of has an alternate history you know with like world war ii and all that and yeah just absolutely love it multiplayer was great but the story itself and levels like there's just so much packed into this like you could yeah it's just an amazing game i was debating so much on putting this in my top 10 um but just fell a little short but that does not mean it's bad again fantastic game and at number 11 i have soul caliber 2 so yeah really love this um you know not super big on fighting games, but man, when there's a fighting game that really draws to me, like, I love it, and, um, oh man, my nose is itchy now, <laughs> but yeah, just really fun and, um, really cool to have Spawn in here, and, uh, yeah, I just, <laughs> I remember probably my biggest memory is actually pissing my brother off so badly um because you know you, your brothers are going to troll each other and i know one fight i kept juggling him over and over and he just got so mad he threw the controller like can't remember if he broke it or anything but yeah that's definitely my number one memory with this game and yeah absolutely love it <laughs> all right so should be in the top 10 ah let me just Grab these and see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, we are. So at number ten, I have Simpsons Hit and Run. So another game I picked up not too too long ago, but you know played a long time ago at friend's house. And uh, Simpsons was like my favorite show growing up for the longest time. Um, you know and while don't really watch it now like still love the old episodes and all that and you know so many things i can quote uh, you know like i <laughs> one of my favorites is still like from season two of um when homer sends mr burns a letter because he's angry and all that and he tries to give that he's like hello my name is mr burns i believe you have a letter for me okay mr burns what's your first name I don't know, <laughs> but yeah, really cool, uh, Grand Theft Auto clone, and yeah, just, <laughs> just pure fun, even though it gets very frustrating at times, because once you get about halfway through, it just gets super difficult, but yeah, still, ton of fun, then at number nine, I have Dungeons and Dragons Heroes, so this one might surprise quite a bit of people, um, but this is high on my list because of just how much it means to me. It's one of my favorite sort of Diablo-type games to play. You know, top-down, 
uh, action role-playing game, and yeah, um, you can play solo or with uh, up to four other people, and just a ton of fun. Not super long or anything, but... Um, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, just a lot of fun, and um, yeah, just a lot of great memories with this, and yeah, it just means so much, and I still absolutely love this game. At number eight, we have uh, Spider-Man 2, so... This is probably my trying to, yeah, probably my third favorite Spider-Man after um, the Insomniac Spider-Man that we got in 2018, I believe, and then um, Spider-Man Shard Dimensions, which I think is a fantastic game, but yeah, this one is so cool, um, really great game, um, you know, it really kind of set the standard for a lot of Spider-Man games and having that open world New York and all that. And really cool to have a lot of, you know, voice actors, you know, kind of the actors from the movies do the voices for this game, like Tobey Maguire and Alfred Molino. Um, but, <laughs> Molino, Molina. <laughs> but, yeah, um... And the swinging is just, it, it's Spider-Man. Like, if you feel like Spider-Man, and that's the most important things with these uh, superhero games, right? And, yeah, just a ton of fun. And, yeah, really set the standards high. So, that was number eight. So, number seven, we have Crimson Sky. So, yeah, talk about, like, probably my favorite um, kind of dogfighting game of all time, um, besides maybe Star Fox 64, but even then, like, I'm not sure, just, this is pure, pure fun of just, yeah, one, some of the best dog fighting experiences you can get, and, um, yeah, it's too bad that this series sort of just kind of disappeared and all that, because, yeah, this is fantastic, and, um, yeah, if you can find this, pick it up, like, you can get this for a buck or whatever, it's so, so cheap, and, yeah, absolutely amazing, and so we're at number six, yes, number six, so, at number six, I have another James Bond, 007 Nightfire, so, yeah, still fantastic game, it's, yeah, no, it's kind of weird, I have, like, green case for platinum hits uh one here but yeah um just one of the best uh james bond games out there especially now because you know goldeneye will always sort of be thought about at least in a legacy type of situation but you know it doesn't hold up too well but this game man it's so fun and um you know, really cool story, original story and all that, and just, yeah, it's, I'm not sure you're going to get a bit, like, I'm hoping, um, I know James Bond, like, uh, IO Interactive, I believe, like, I, I think that's the company, the Hitman guys, so I'll just call them, um, making a new one, so, yeah, really looking forward to that, because, yeah, we haven't had a James Bond game in a long, long while, and, um, yeah, hopefully they can, uh, top games like Night Fire, or b before, when I said with everything or nothing, and at number five, I have Halo 2, so, yeah, what can I say about Halo 2, um, you know, fantastic first-person shooter, awesome multiplayer, um, you know, love the addition of the Arbiter and all that, um, and, Unlike most people, I actually really enjoyed the ending of this game, right? Um, just, yes, the final level and boss were definitely rushed where the game just sort of ends, but as far as the ending itself, I actually really loved it and got really pumped for Halo 3. So, yeah, just a lot of great memories with this game and, yeah, fantastic. And at number four, <laughs> I have uh, Jade Empire, a game that's, you know, 
forgotten many, many times so much, but it is, you know, Bio one of Bioware's best works as, you know, just kind of dealing with, like, martial arts and all that, and, you know, a really cool story plays pretty much the same as, uh, you know, Knights of the Old Republic and all that, and, yeah, it's just so fun, such great characters, like, I think that's the biggest thing with this is, like, the characters, and game itself, it's just phenomenal, and, yeah, highly, highly recommend people check it out. <laughs> Number three, I have Star Wars Battlefront 2, so, yeah, this is still, like, one of the best Star Wars games, and, with it's not even just the multiplayer with this game, like, the single-player stuff, and going through, um, all the campaign and, you know, moments through the movies and all that. It's just so, so fun, so satisfying. Um, And, yeah, it's too bad that EA just, you know, didn't quite do justice with uh, Battlefront games themselves. Like, their Battlefront 2, eventually, you know, after they kind of backed down on microtransactions and all that... Um, you know, was a good game, just there's something about this that, yeah, it's just it's fantastic, and I don't think it'll ever be taught um, for that style of Star Wars game anyways, that sort of shooter and multiplayer madness, so number two, <laughs> God pick Halo, so um, yeah, was funny, play first time I played this was uh, Christmas uh, 2001, I got a phone call from my best friend at the time who said, hey, I just got an Xbox for Christmas, got Halo, you know, packed in and all that, um, and said, like, you gotta come over, we gotta play this, I'm not even going to touch the game until you come over and we play and beat this uh, together and all that, and yeah, just... Oh man, what can, what, what can I say? Like this set the standard for, you know, shooters moving forward. Um, and while Halo doesn't have the same household name that it used to, um, it's like these games still have some of the best stories for any shooter that you will ever see. And yeah, what more can I say? Then, my number one game on the original Xbox is Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. And now they're remaking this, which is really exciting. Um, hopefully it turns out good, but even if it falls a bit flat or whatever, this game is still so fun to play. One, you know, my favorite Star Wars game ever. Um... And, <laughs> yes, like, character's story, um, you know, one of the greatest plot, po uh, plot twists of all time, and, yeah, if you never played this, either wait for the remake, or, yeah, check this game out, because, yeah, it's just so fun, and, well... It is a bit dated, especially on the original Xbox with loading times and all that. Oh man, it's just... I can't get enough of this. And it's one of the few games, too, where I really enjoy playing the dark side a lot more than the light side. You know, usually for games where you have that good evil choice, I'm always the good guy. But these games just make it so fun to uh, play the evil side. I... Was also debating on playing God uh, Knights of the Old Republic 2 in my top 20 because I think Obsidian did a fantastic job of that too. I think more people should check that one, that game out. And um, but yeah, I just sort of left it off mainly because I had this one and so many other games. But yeah, what can I say more about Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic? It just yeah, absolutely. Of that, so yeah, that's my top 20 um, original Xbox games. I hope you enjoyed them, um, and yeah, I'll see you next time. And 
you know, th since it's Thanksgiving, go and have some turkey, some pie, <laughs> and just relax for the rest of the day. All right, thanks everyone, and take care. <laughs>